Greetings today from Botswana. I just want to welcome you all here, and I just hope that if you're a born-again Christian, if you believe that you're a born-again Christian, I really urge you to watch this. Sometimes people come across a thing like this and they say, well, I'm already saved, I don't have need of this information. But we are at such a time in history, such a time of deceit, you want to make sure of your salvation. There are some out there who will no doubt believe in eternal security, that they have been saved and that there is nothing that can happen to let them fall away from salvation. Uh, I don't agree with that point of view biblically, uh, but I have done a blog on that. It will be included in the links. You can look at it if you are interested. Other than that, I just urge you to listen. Perhaps you can gain a benefit for yourself or another loved one, because time is short. Matthew 7, 13, 14 reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So the question is, what are few? What does the Bible say are few? We are not giving any specific percentages, but it does give us some ideas as to what that is. As far as what we are seeing here in Botswana, and we have seen generally, we have heard of it also and seen it in America, everyone thinks they are saved. Let's face it, nobody wants to go to hell. They all want to think that they're going to heaven when they die. Uh, a well-known preacher, Paul Washer, from America, said that after he was saved, he had gone through his hometown trying to find Christians. He, was, he asked, and everyone said that they were saved. It just gets to be that simple. And here in Africa, we have been seeing uh, pastors that are declaring their entire congregations to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, when you read a scripture like this, that broad is the way of destruction and narrow is the way to life, even within churches, how can you declare people to be saved? I think there is a genuine question. So let me read this also from Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now there are several things I want to point out from this from uh, these few verses. Number one, Jesus said that many would be saying this to him. There will be many in this state on the last day. Number two, these are not marginal Christians. You can see that they are doing many great works, even to the point of casting out devils. So these are not marginal Christians, but these are leaders, most likely, at least within their congregations. Number three, it needs to be said, they are not going before Jesus thinking that they can pull a fast one on him. They are going before Jesus deceived. Satan has deceived them into thinking they are good people and that they are saved. I see this very clearly, and that is, of all the deceptions that Satan can pull on a person, one of the surest, best ways into hell is for him to deceive them into thinking they have eternal life and that everything is right with God. Because if that is the case, they won't be looking deeply. They won't be looking at themselves and asking questions. As I have said also in other times, uh, the religious are very hard to convert. They already have it figured out. And so what I like to do is I like to give you some examples, uh, some examples to consider as far as the few that are saved. Okay, the few, uh, I have to say, first of all, some of this requires speculation, but I hope you see by the speculations that I do that they are not uh, unreasonable. I will try to explain them to you, and it is scripturally based. First of all, I'm going to look at the mercy, the mercy of God, even amongst the few. We see in Elijah, 1 Kings 19, verse, verse 18, God is telling Elijah that he has 7,000 left that have not bent a knee to Baal. He still has 7,000. Now, we don't know the exact population of Israel at this time, but let's say it was 7 million. 
we have we have heard on good account that between three and four million Jews left left Egypt, and this was probably about seven hundred years after that. So we could say seven million, and that makes the accounting very easy because seven thousand is one tenth of one percent. One tenth of one percent of seven million, and even if it were only the exact. Uh, population it was before when they left Egypt, that would be two tenths of one percent. So it's a really, it's a still a very small number. But God is not bringing judgment upon Israel at this time. This just shows his, this shows his great mercy that he has toward toward people. Then we also see in Jeremiah, in chapter five, verse one. Okay, Jeremiah is also speaking of the judgment to come, and God says, Run to and fro throughout the streets of Jerusalem, if he could find one man that executed judgment, that was standing for the truth, he would pardon it. One man out of 40 or 50,000 people in Jerusalem? Uh, now, maybe that included Jeremiah and possibly uh, his scribe uh, Baruch, the son of Neriah. But you can see what a small number that is, but God was still willing to be merciful. And then finally, I have also thrown in uh, Paul and his group that were traveling with him from Acts 27:37. There were 276 on the ship that was taking Paul to Rome, and there were eight in his group, I believe. That's the number I got by counting. Okay, so that is 2.9%. Only 2.9% of those on the boat, and the Lord saved the whole boat. Now as we look toward the judgment of God, I ask you to consider these things. First of all, we see in the days of Noah, the time of Noah, eight were saved. That is, Noah, his three sons, and then all of their wives were eight. But the question is, how many were in the earth in that day? And you say, well, nobody knows, and that is true. However, we have looked for estimates. And I had asked my wife to look up some estimates on this, and she got two figures. The first person guessed that there were between 750 million and two billion on the earth. Remember, this was 1,650 years of civilization. It wasn't that God just created and then, and then had the flood. There was a length of time in between. And then the other estimate was between 5 billion and 17 billion. And that is an, <laughs> that's a lot of people, but he had many good reasons for considering it to be so high. And the earth was a much different place at that time. However, just for conversation's sake, what if it were only 200 million? As you can see, I went well below the lowest estimate. If it were that, there would only be one out of 25 million saved. That is a percentage you can't, almost can't even figure. It's so small. But then the other example that Jesus uses, and this is from Luke 17, verses 26 to 30, he's comparing it to Lot. Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, it was Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities. Now just try to find information on Sodom and Gomorrah on the internet. It is not easy. and There's a lot of prejudice against it. But there isn't a lot of information because God really obliterated these, city, these cities. Uh, but this was a very rich and fertile area, very well populated. So just to take a low estimate and say that there were 100,000 people in the entire area, that does not seem very high. But then God saved Lot, his wife, and his two unmarried daughters. So that would only come to four out of 100,000, which is one person in every 25,000. Are you seeing the numbers? You remember how it was that Abraham was negotiating with God for, the, for saving Sodom. And God agreed that if there had been just 10, just 10 righteous, he would not destroy it for the righteous sake. But of course, he didn't get that many. Uh, and there's one other example I want to give you, but it's not from Scripture. And so you can take this as seriously as you want to. But I read a book by a man named Howard Pittman. I think it was called Placebo. It might have been called The Placebo Effect. I'm not sure. Uh, this was from an account of 1980. It's been just over 40 years. Howard Pittman is a Christian. And he died, and God showed him things while he was dead. And one of the things Howard Pittman was shown... At the time while he was in heaven and he was watching, he was watching those that entered the gates of heaven. And he was made to know that during that period of time he was watching that 2,000 people 
had died on the earth and 50 were being admitted to heaven. That's only two and a half percent. Okay. And so again, I say this is not, this is not Bible. And this is from one man's experience. And he also said that God wasn't telling him this is always the percentage. He said he was just impressed upon to make this known to him. And I think that's just so that we can know that few indeed are saved and we ought to take our salvation uh, seriously. And so I have another video that I'm going to do. I want people to watch it. I want you to see it for what is missing. We have come to the end of time. And God is not going to judge the earth if there are a lot of Christians left. He's doing that because there has been a great falling away. Men have departed from the faith. And so hopefully within the next day or so, I'm going to be recording another video. Get them up there so you can watch and see what this, what this false religion is that has taken so many that pastors are proclaiming their entire congregations to be saved when that couldn't possibly be the case. What has happened in our day? I pray that you would uh, stay tuned, and uh, God bless you today. Please keep this in prayer. It is a very serious matter at this time in history.